So, hey folks, and welcome back to another video. And on today's ride, we are just on our way down to Arnside. And um, we're going to be talking about what's coming up in this week uh, for the channel. Uh, this video will be uh, up on Monday, Bank Holiday Monday, today. And the following weekend's video might be a little late because I'm actually going out to another country on a bike launch. So uh, that will be really nice. It's something special. Can't discuss it yet until Monday the 15th of May when the video will be released. So stay tuned for that. It is something special. Pretty mind-blowing, to be honest. Even the trip there is mind-blowing. So uh, stay tuned for that. Okay. Right on the Bonneville today. And also what I've got uh, in store for you today a few of you are asking about the SW Motec Legend panniers, soft panniers that I've got on the back of this bike. And as you know, for the, uh, the regular viewers of the channel, whenever I'm on this bike just doing a daily run, I always take the 9.8 litre, just the right hand side behind me, little side pannier just to keep my camera gear in and uh, some water and stuff like that. But today, uh, people have been asking can we have a look at the difference between the 13.5 litre bag and also the 9.8 litre bag just to see what the difference is in size and how it looks on the bike. So on the left hand side behind me just now I've got the 13.5 litre and then the 9.8 litre on the right. So I'll, uh, I'll show you that when we get to our side. Looks like the sea's in and I bet our side's quite busy today after the coronation. Now I'm coming in today from Carnforth route, just around the uh, the coastal road. Lovely little run. You've got the uh, wetlands marsh area on the left just here, which is a bird sanctuary. And then we're going to follow the, uh, the coast around that headland just over there, past Hollins Farm. Nice campsite uh, if you're up this way and you want a site. That's a very good one. I'll show you that when we get to it. Now the weather today's warmed up, which is nice. A little bit milder and we don't have any rain today a little bit yesterday so i thought i'd come out on a sunday and upload this video on a monday with it being bank holiday now as i fitted the fork springs into this motorcycle from tech bike parts a couple of weeks ago if you haven't checked that video out i'll pop you a link in the uh, top right hand corner just now and also that's a fitting video as well if you're interested um, it's really upgraded the, the front end of the Bonneville and it really handles a lot better now. You don't feel as many bumps and things. It's uh, definitely a, uh, a top mod for around the £70 mark. So progressive fork springs in the front of the, uh, the latest Bonnevilles. Now we're just going to do a left here towards Silverdale. Like I said, we're going to head round the coast. Now, I took a little break last week with the family, with it being a bank holiday also, and uh, just took a really long weekend, Friday to Monday, and uh, decided to fly out to Tenerife just to uh, get some activities in. So uh, it was a very fun-packed weekend, actually. We, uh, we went to a water park. We did a boat trip to watch some uh, pilot whales coming in between uh, Tenerife and Lagamero, which was nice. And also the wife wanted to take in a flamenco night. Very good one, actually. Not a tacky one. It was a, uh, a flamenco uh, group, very, uh, very popular one that tour Spain. And they were on the island over that weekend, so we went to see them. Not my cup of tea, but the wife wanted to see it. And then we took in, obviously, the volcano, because the kids have never been to Tenerife. And then we went to, to a lovely beach, actually. If you're ever on the island, there's a public beach right down near the Ritz-Carlton. It's not owned by the hotel. And uh, you can go on there and just rent some beds and things. That was really lovely. Lovely cove. So, yeah, had a thoroughly, uh, thoroughly nice weekend. I would say to recharge the batteries. It wasn't uh, a recharge weekend, but a full-on activity weekend with the kids, so that was nice all the same. Got a bit of sunshine. Now we're just in Silverdale. Lovely little cottages through these villages. Just beautiful. 
Nice church down here as well. Just going to do a left just here. And this will take us up towards Arnside. Past the caravan site that I mentioned. Hollins Park. Very good site. There's a little shingle beach nearby. Great to go down to and have a little campfire at night. Great facilities and also their sister site opposite where the static caravans are. There's a uh, bar and restaurant on site and also a, an indoor swimming pool that you can use as well. So here's the caravan site on the right hand side. They've also got some uh, little lodges and things opposite the cove. Just on the left, just overlook the sea, which are really nice. And then just down here on the left, you've got the little beach. the seas in which is uh, pretty fab there you go nice little beach a great spot on an evening like I say come down have a campfire and the uh, the campsite is not back where the uh, the touring ones are it's just around the corner here like I say, it's owned by the same company. You can use both and all the facilities of the other one. You can literally just walk across the field there. There's a footpath. I think uh, this campsite, though, has a minimum of two nights, which uh, most seem to be doing at the moment. So just on the left here, Hollings Farm, just there. Good shower and toilet facilities. Very nice spot. Maybe we'll feature it on our our camping episodes. Nice car. Thank you very much. Some pleasant people about. Now I'm debating whether to get a little fly screen for the Bonneville. Just one that sits behind the back of the clocks really but it is very small and I'm not sure how effective it would be on a motorway just to keep the wind pressure off my chest. Not really bothered about the helmet and any buffeting on motorways. You pretty much get that with most screens, to be honest, but just that air pressure. So if any of you have got a Bonneville and have got that uh, genuine Triumph little screen on the front, I'd love to hear from you to see whether it it is any good just to keep in that, uh, that pressure, like I say, off your chest. Drop a comment below. And uh, yeah, like I say, it'd be great if anyone knows. Now, actually, I mentioned uh, an epic motorcycle launch event out of the country next week, or this week now, as you're watching the video. And literally, as I fly back in from that one, then I'm off to the one at Gloucester Airport the following weekend. And we've had an invite to Superbike versus Supercar being Ferrari. So that'll be interesting. Uh, there might be a chance to actually test drive some of the Ferraris, which will be nice. I know this is a bike channel, mainly, but uh, I do like my cars as well. Anything exotic, I'm up for it. So we're just dropping down into Arnside just here. Great place, great chippy. There's a good pie shop. A couple of good pubs. And also when I get down here, I'll show you the, the legend panniers, just the difference between the, the small size and the large size. Okay, so the Albion just on the right, you've got some nice seating outside with some glass barriers, because it does get quite windy down here. I'm just gonna go left just here, see if we can find a parking spot. It's actually nice to see the sea in. It's normally out when I come down here.
Okay, there she is, the Bonneville. Got her on the centre stand so you can see the, uh, the bags. So on this side you've got the 9.8 litre SW Motec Legend. And then I'll just show you from the back. So I've got the 13.5 litre on the left hand side just here. And I'm not sure if you can see just the, uh, the sizing where it sits near the exhaust, just there. So it does sit a little lower than the, uh, the other bag. And like I say, there's not much difference other than 13.5 uh, on the left and 9.8 litre on the right. The right bag does sit a little bit higher, only a touch. And as you can see, I've got the uh, SW Motec water bottle just on the back there. So I don't know if you can see, just on there I've got the, the locks from SW Motec. And it just enables me to, uh, to lock the bags onto the panniers. Noisy old jet ski out there. Doesn't sound like it's running right at all. The width of the panniers, not too wide from the back. About the same width as the handlebars. So I've got two of these 13.5 litre, which I'll have on for the Isle of Man. So I'll take that daily bag off, put the two on, and then I'll put the, uh, the Lone Rider 30 litre roll top bag on the back, the Overlander. I'll pop a link in the top right hand corner for the uh, the bag so you can see it. Now I don't know if I've shown you this before but uh, this is the Roland Sands tool bag that I've got on the back rack just now. Obviously I won't have that on when I'm touring because I'll have my tent on the back just there. But it's quite a neat little bag. You can keep all your tools and your uh, puncture repair kit and everything in there. It's quite a nice, uh, nice touch. Matches the side bags. And yeah she's looking pretty good. Pretty good. Well happy with this bike. I am going to do a six months review shortly on this bike. So on side by the sea. I'll just show you along the front. Okay, so you've got Bakehouse Stellion Farm Shop just here. Chemist, a few little shops along the front, some ice cream. All looks very splendid. This is an estuary, so it is tidal. You've got another pub, and then just up that little alley. No, not that one. Just around the... what's this guy doing? Just around the corner here, there is a car park just there on the left hand side. You've got the, uh, the fish and chip shop just here. Very, very good chippy. And then you've got on side train station just on the left, just here. And we're just going to do a left just here towards Millthorpe under the bridge. And we'll stop off for a coffee in the square in Millthorpe. There's a nice little uh, little permanent burger van that's there. I think it's called Sue's. So I'll we'll stop at Sue's for a coffee, I think. Yeah, I was really happy with the SW Motec luggage, the legend gear. And uh, I've also got the tank bag. It's a magnetic tank bag, which I suppose in the past I've used magnetic tank bags. Never scratched a tank with one. You just have to make sure that the underside, there's no grit or anything stuck to the magnets, uh, the uh, where the magnets are, obviously it's got material over so it shouldn't scratch. But on the Bonnevilles you can also get like a uh, a rack that sticks onto the tank with uh, like suction cups, looks like the old racks of uh, the 60s. I think that one, because it's got straps as well, it might just strap onto that, that rack and then it'll stop it actually touching the tank which will be great. Obviously with the uh, the rack on there it just looks like uh, 
like the Bonnevilles from the 60s as well. Not sure how it'll look, but anyway, it's something I might get. A few guys with the fishing rods just here, hoping to catch something. Now there was a pub round the corner here, it always used to be a good little one with some nice seating outside and uh, last time I was up it was closed down the ship just here and still it's, uh, it's shut down which is a shame now I suppose a few of you are wondering as I've been riding the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 I get a few comments how does it compare to the T120 well like I said in the final thoughts video on that. I can't really compare the two because this is a 1200cc modern day classic and that's a 650 so engine wise, performance wise, there's nothing, nothing in it whatsoever. And also the price point is uh, too different. You could buy two Interceptor 650s for the price of this. So I'm not going to compare it. The only thing you can compare it to is the new BSA Gold Star or maybe the Motor Guzzi V7 Stone and also the Kawasaki W800 somebody highlighted one of these to me that had done one mile so brand new and they were selling them for 6400 which is uh, about the same price as the Interceptor 650 so Kawasaki are obviously trying to get rid of them and what a bargain that is, 6400 for a W800 Kawasaki. Parallel twin, same as the Bonnie. Absolute bargain. I must say it's lovely to see the Union Jacks and the, uh, the flags out this weekend. I'd love to see a bit more of that, to be honest, in these little, uh, little villages of England. So, we're in Milnthorpe, Cross Keys Hotel on the right hand side. We'll go straight across here, just onto the square, and uh, we'll get a coffee at Sue's. Just wondering how the view is, looking back at me guys, because I was using the Insta360 camera for that purpose. And now I'm using the same DJI Action 3. It's a lot easier editing, and keeps both of the, uh, the pictures the same quality. So I decided on a nice uh, cold can of Vimto in the end, didn't want a hot drink, and a nice uh, slice of flatjack. They do burgers, they do everything really there, cakes, coffees, chips, you name it. Uh, it's always a good spot to stop if you're coming through Milnthorpe for some refreshments. Got some nice seating outside as you see in the picture just here. Turning out to be a lovely day. Absolutely beautiful. This is the weather you want. And I'm just praying to God that I have this weather when we go to the Isle of Man at the end of the month. Now while I'm really happy with this bike, and the only negative I have about all the Bonnevilles is the tubed tyres. If I'm touring on this bike, like to the Isle of Man or in August when I uh, do another European tour, I'm seriously considering a little modification I think it's called Outex, 
basically take the wheels off, take the tyres and the tubes out and then to seal the spokes up in the centre of the inner of the wheel. Outex provide a kit to do that. They're meant to be really good. They're meant to work, which is the best thing. And then get some uh, proper tubeless tyres on. And I'll probably go for the, uh, the Michelin Classics, I think, on this next. But, of course, I want to get my money's worth, so I'm going to wear these uh, out as much as I can before August. And then I'll do the conversion just before I do my European trip. Now, I've used the tyre repair kits on various trips before, and that's a kit that I cannot use on a tube tyre, so if I do get a puncture while I'm on my trip, then, you know, you've got to call the, uh, the tow truck out, which is uh, a shame. Whereas if I had tubeless tyres, I could just repair it in five minutes on the side of the road with that kit, so... That's the plan for the next modification on this bike. Right, well, just about to hop on to the dual carriageway, so we'll uh, we'll end the video there this week, guys. Got tons of really cool stuff happening in the week and next weekend that we're going to bring to you on the uh, the channel. So stay tuned to that, and if you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And uh, always great if you can give the video a like, guys. Thank you very much, and uh, ciao for now.